Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. As you guys might have heard, there's been a kind of um, pressure on streaming services and kind of like services that let you stream torrents. It's definitely pretty upsetting for people who are reliant on this kind of thing. Now, I've made videos on this before. Um, specifically, this is in the news right now. This thing, Real to Bread. Um, if you guys don't know, you could connect it to various kind of applications like Streamio basically stream torrents this is one of the most effective and easy ways to kind of get media quickly and stream it very quickly of course you always have to check with your laws in your countries and so forth um, but this is definitely a very popular method the problem with this method though as you guys can see is that if a centralized service like real to bread gets shut down basically what's happened in this uh, instance is that the french government kind of went after them and kind of forced them to shut down because they were letting people stream pretty much free movies and stuff like that, which is not available or illegal to do in France. Who knows where they got pressured from outside of France as well, maybe something like Hollywood. Um, but anyways, this service is pretty getting shut down and that means anyone who's using it to stream content is not able to do so anymore. So this leads you to the conclusion, well, what are you supposed to do now? How can I have prevented this in the first place? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about why a service like Real to Bread is not necessarily the best, most sustainable, secure, and independent solution for watching media. The problems with something like Real to Bread is that they are available to legal pressures and shutdowns. Um, anytime you rely on a centralized service for convenience, this is something that can happen. And if you, um, the, another thing about Real to Bread, it was a paid service too. So anyone who had subscription time left over has pretty much gotten screwed. Um, additionally, if you subscribe to other services like Real to Bread that are alternatives, you're you're also going to be paying and have a risk of your account being shut down, which is definitely not good. At the end of the day, it's uh, it's almost like a streaming service, just the slightly better one, I guess. There are also privacy concerns with services like this. You are kind of connecting to them and they can be kind of storing your IP. I think a lot of the websites kind of store your IP and information for up to a year. So that's definitely not ideal. You can't always use VPN with these services, but Anytime you use it, making sure to connect your VPN and so forth can be kind of tricky. So you have one, the risk of losing access and paying for it. So wasting your money Two, having a slight privacy concern and three, um, just the inconvenience of having to find another solution, I guess, and not being able to watch any of that stuff you watched before the same way. So that leads me to my next conclusion. What is a better alternative? Well, on my channel, I've actually made several videos I've made two or three videos on how to make your own automated media server. This is basically the method that does require some setup, but I've managed to do it and I'm not any Linux expert by any means. I just set it up on my Windows computer. And basically what you do is use a combination of three or four applications that do things like scan the internet, look for torrent files, um, download them to your computer. Um, anytime a new episode comes out, you can automatically download it and stuff like that. You can even send requests to your Discord and then add stuff to the media server. It just kind of makes the management of a media server much easier. But at the end of the day, making your own media server and owning your collection is probably the best solution. Why is that? Well, once you have the content on your computer, no one can really revoke access to it. It's kind of like yours. Secondarily, it's a lot more decentralized. Yeah, there's hundreds of different torrent websites there to gather your content. Of course, Linux ISOs, I'm not encouraging you to download any illegal content based on the laws in your country. So there's a lot of decentralization kind of among the different websites out there. You can even use private trackers and stuff like that, which are pretty good. But downloading a torrent, putting it on your computer, it's not going to be like ripped away like some streaming kind of apparatus. I would say that owning and collecting your own media server is also more anonymous using a trustworthy VPN. Um, always kind of downloading torrents with a VPN is a little bit easier than kind of working it with those streaming services. You could set up stuff like kill switches. You could use a Soxi proxy in a BitTorrent application like I've recommended on my channel. You can even set up an NAS and just have it only connected to a VPN router or only have that NAS kind of purposely built for downloading content and stuff like that, making it very secure and private. There's just so many different ways you can do it. Where the streaming services, there's like really one way to do it. Let's just connect to a website, copy the API key, and then kind of sync things up. But again, it presents all those problems like I discussed. Another benefit is the cost effectiveness. You might have some old computer laying around. You might even be able to do it on your main computer. Um, especially if it's powerful enough and you don't mind leaving it on or something like that. Um, but definitely saving some money, not having to, to apply to a subscription model is a benefit and we all like that. 
So guys, you're wondering, well, okay, you've convinced me, Tom. How do I get started with making a decentralized media server? How do I get started making my own server? Well, thankfully for you, I've made several videos on this topic. If you guys are wanting to get into an automated media server, you really kind of want to power use and make it a very good experience. You might want to check out some of these videos here on my channel. However, if you're just a lay person and you kind of want to just get started at a very basic level, what you'll need to do is get a VPN, a torrent application, um, a couple of websites to download torrent files and a media server application like something like Plex, Jellyfin, or my favorite, MB. These are the things that kind of um, are applications in your computer and they will install them on a different device and be able to connect and play your content from your media server. I even made a video just a couple days ago about how to remotely access your own media server if you guys want to check out that video as well. My favorite combination is probably using something like NordVPN. I'll be putting a link for description for that in the link down below. Um, you could get four extra months and the best discount you could pretty much find on YouTube. So I use NordVPN Sox5 Proxy. It's basically just an address. I copy and paste it and put it in my preferred torrent application, which in this case is QBitTorrent. Once I do that, I'll copy and paste the magnet link and then it will put it in a folder. MB will scan that folder and then it'll be readily available for me on any other device that has MB to watch said file. So guys, now that we've kind of got to the end of this video, let me know what you think. Are you gonna to switch to a more privacy focused decentralized option like owning and collecting your own media server? In some ways it is more work, but there also are advantages like I discussed in this video. The convenience and streaming and stuff like that can't really be denied. There are some other services out there that people are starting to move to, um, but again, a lot of those are also based in France and could have similar issues. So you might save yourself a headache and just start doing it kind of like the right way early on. However, it's really up to you. And I'm not gonna say one way is better than the other, but there are clear advantages to this method as I described in this video. All right, guys, let me know what you're planning on doing in the description down below or comments rather, and I'll see you again very soon.